So we have an equation. Um, a couple things that we talked about here, guys, with uh, knowing this equation. First thing, if we're trying to find these zeros, we're going to set this equal to 0. And therefore, that follows the definition of finding these zeros, right? Setting the function equal to 0. And now we just need to go ahead and solve. Now, from this point, a lot of students will just go ahead and apply the zero product property. So therefore, we can just set x minus 2 squared equals 0 and x squared minus 1 equal to 0. Some students will try to just go ahead and find the zeros from here. Like they'll shortcut it and they'll say, oh, the 0 is 2 and the zeros are 1 with both with the multiplicity of 2. But you got to understand, the powers are at different places, right? Here, the power is, out, is of the factor. Here is the power of the variable, right? They both don't mean represent multiplicity. The only thing that represents multiplicity is the power of the linear factor. That is not a linear factor. So when you solve, hopefully you guys take the square root of both sides, add the 2, you get x equals 2. Add 1, take the square root, you get plus or minus 1. Right? You have to include that plus or minus. So therefore, we know there's actually three zeros here. And that's helpful because um, we talked about finding the zeros. But then we do, that doesn't really give us an idea of multiplicity. Right? That's why the linear factorization is helpful. So we can, since this is not linear, we want to factor this down so it is a linear factor. So this can still be written as x, square, x minus 2 squared, but this can be factored using difference of two squares. And now it's much easier for us to be able to see that the zeros is going to be 2 at a multiplicity equal to 2 and plus or minus 1 at a multiplicity equal to 1. Right? OK. Um, now, we looked at that information, and uh, what we said is, well, from that information, we could also identify um, what the graph is going to look like. So from the graph, we can say, well, there is a 0 at plus or minus 1, and there's a 0 at 2. OK, and um, when we're looking at this, the what was I going to say? Oh, we look at the multiplicity to identify like how does that function behave at that zero? Well, remember, guys, when it's odd multiplicity, the, no, not that one. When it's odd multiplicity, the graph is going to cross, right? And when it's even multiplicity, the graph is going to bounce. So we don't know how it's going to bounce. It bounces up, bounces down. We could find the y-intercept. If you guys remember the y-intercept, you can basically just replace f of x with y. And just plug 0 in for x to find the y-intercept. And in this case, we would get a negative 4. So let's just pretend here's negative 4. So from this information, you might be able to sketch the graph. Right? That might be enough for some of you to be able to sketch the graph. But what another question I ask you is, what is the end behavior? Yes? How would you get negative 4? Well, 0 minus, two, negative, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is? 4. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Yeah, yeah the negative is the square. Um, so another thing we ask is n behavior. So then we got to understand, all right, so how do we understand, you know, how do we work with n behavior here? And if you guys remember, n behavior um, is look, we use the leading coefficient test. So basically, what's important here is, you know, like for instance, this function up here. If I wanted to find the n behavior, of this function. The only thing I care about is that 2x is 6. Right? The high, the, when, it's in this, when it's in standard form, I only care about that leading term, the term that has the highest power. Everybody agrees? Highest power. Everything else doesn't affect my end behavior. So I don't need it. So you know, the end behavior here, it's the, the um, degree is either even or odd, and the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Now, if you don't like what I'm about to show you, or what I've already done, could you just multiply this out? Right? We talked about binomial expansion and multiplying. You guys could multiply this out. But hopefully you guys understand it's a waste of time to multiply that out for the end behavior because we don't need the rest of that stuff. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the end behavior. All we want to do is figure out what is going to be that leading term. So I'm going to kind of work up here. If I was going to multiply this out, let's just pretend I was going to multiply x minus 2 squared. What would be the leading term of x minus 2 times x minus 2? x squared. I don't care what everything else is. And then I'd multiply that by x squared minus 1. If I was to multiply x squared dot 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 times x squared minus 1, that leading term would be now x to the fourth, to the fourth dot 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 dot. OK? So now I look at this and I say, oh, x to the fourth is even. My leading coefficient is positive. 
So then I think, all right, what do I know about um, something that is even and positive? And my mind automatically goes to a quadratic, right? Because quadratic is x squared. Because x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, x to the tenth, x to the twelfth, x to the fourteenth, I think you get the idea. Anything that is even, has an even power, is going to behave like a quadratic. It's going to rise to the left, rise to the right, or fall to the left, fall to the right, right? Remember, a was positive, it opens up. a is negative, it opens down. So you can think of like one as like your a, like, oh, it's positive. So therefore, this graph is going to rise left and rise right. So let's do rise left, rise right. So the graph looks like this and looks like this. Yes? No, we're going to have to write in mathematical notation, which I'll cover next. So, but for at least for sketching the graph, though, that's like at least we can like just use that for our brain to like get that idea, right? Then all we're simply going to do is just connect. It has to go through the zero, go through the y-intercept, come through here, go through here. Up, oh, has to go to this zero. So I go here. I got to bounce. And you guys can see if you had to graph that on Desmos, that is mm, close enough, right? At least for at least for this quiz. All right. Wait, so do we need to, will there be a question that asks us to graph it? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe. There's a question on there. But it is something we've done in this class, right? So it's fair game. Um, now, the next thing is, so what if I ask you about end behavior? And I said end behavior, guys, is not going to be taught with rise left, rise right. We've got to make sure we understand like, the end behavior like, notation. So let's go ahead and talk about end behavior notation. Um, I'll do it up here. Well, do I have more room over here? Yeah, a little bit. OK. So let's talk about this notation, because everybody seems to not like this notation. Everybody's really kind of, everybody likes rise left, rise right. OK. So here's the x-axis. Right? You guys have first learned about the x-axis going to the left, going to the right. Right? OK. So as x, on this x-axis, Right, so here's the x-axis. As x continues to the right, right, I can only draw it for so long. But as we continue going to the right, so this is to the right. X is going where? As I keep on going to the right, where is x going towards? What numbers are we going to keep on? What are we going to eventually be approaching, as we'd say? Positive infinity. And as x is going to the left. As we're going to the left, we're going towards negative infinity, right? You guys would agree is if we're just thinking of x's, left and right, to the right is infinity, to the left is negative infinity, correct? All right, so now let's throw in that y-axis. Well, this is going up. So remember what we talked. What do we talk about? You know that represents going up. Well, we talked about this first in algebra one as like the y-axis, but we could also talk about it as the f of x-axis. Really, right? They can be interchangeable. Um, for us on functions. So if I'm, if I'm going up, how could I So that means, f, let's just say f of x. If I'm going up, then f of x is going towards infinity. So we'd say f of x is going towards infinity. And if I'm going down, then f of x is going towards negative, negative infinity. So if I write this, all I need to do to do this in mathematical notation is just replace Right with x approaches infinity, replace left with x approaches negative infinity. I'm just translating it into mathematical language. It's not different, it's not changing it. I'm just replacing. So rising means going up, right? So you can say f of x approaches infinity as, usually a lot of times we say um, as, we'll use as like as a connector, um, but I'm, I'm not going to use the connectors for this. I'm just going to give you guys the replacements. So going towards the left is x goes towards negative infinity. And then rising would be f of x approaches infinity. Going towards the right would be x approaches infinity. Right? And that's it. Now, I'll give you guys a little bit of a tip and a hint. Like, there's a, there is a question on end behavior as a free response. There's also a question on end behavior as a multiple choice. Right? Use the notation in the multiple choice to kind of help you make confirm, make sure that you're writing it in the free response, right? I mean, that's those are things you guys should look at when you guys are taking tests and quizzes. Look for things that might help you or you might use as an aid to help you in there. It's not the same end behavior, but I'm just saying use like that understanding and that notation to kind of make sure you write it in the free response. Because I don't want this. I want you to work on the free response stuff. 
All right, so that covers zeros um, and behavior, multiplicity, linear factorization, graphing. I think that was about it. Anybody have any other questions on this that maybe I didn't cover? Except obviously the factoring portion, but I mean that's that's just factoring, like factoring to the linear factorization. So you guys got that? Yep. No, I said when I taught that, you guys are not going to have something on completing the square.